the antiderivative theorem. So, uh, let f be a continuous function on a region G. Okay. Uh, then the following statements are equivalent. And uh, the statements are 1 f has an antiderivative capital F throughout the region G. Okay. Uh, what that means is that i e uh, there is a function capital F okay, defined on all of G such that capital F is analytic at every point in G, okay? uh, analytic on G and uh, the derivative of F is little f of z for all z for any z in G. Okay, that is what uh, having an antiderivative means. Okay. So, uh, this statement is equivalent to the following second statement that the contour integral of f of z dz is equal to 0 on any contour gamma uh, which is closed. Okay. So, for every closed contour gamma okay, uh, which is completely contained in G. So, gamma should be in G. Okay. So, the first statement is equivalent to the second statement, which in turn is equivalent to the following third statement. Uh, let A be a point in G and let B be uh, another point in G. Okay. So, then the contour integral of f of z dz over gamma okay, uh, is a constant Okay, for any uh, gamma lying in G with initial point A and final point. Okay, what that means is that if A is the initial point and B is the initial point of the contour gamma, then, uh, then it does not matter how gamma uh, travels in G. Uh, so, in other uh, words, the contour integral is called path independent. Okay? So, uh, the contour integral of F uh, only depends on the end points A and B. Okay? So, this statement is equivalent to uh, 1 and 2. Okay. So, that is the uh, assertion of this theorem. So, let us see a proof of this. Okay. So, you will immediately recall the fundamental theorem of calculus, the complex version which we have proved earlier. Okay. It immediately gives you that the first statement that uh, there exists an antiderivative immediately gives you uh, 2 and 3. Okay. So, uh, 1 implies 2 or 1 implies 3 due to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so, let me write the fundamental theorem of calculus, the complex version of course, the relevant version complex version. Okay. So, uh, right, because uh, if if little f were uh, the derivative of an analytic function, then uh, the integration on closed contours we proved uh, will be zero, and uh, that uh, and we also proved that uh, the integration line integral will depend only on the endpoints. Okay. So uh, the value in part three uh, of the line integral will be. 
the value of the function capital F at the point B minus the value of the function capital F at the point A. Okay, so, this we did earlier. Okay. So, now uh, we need to uh, well there are various ways we can prove this equivalence of these three statements. Uh, what we will do is we will prove that uh, 2 implies 3. Okay. So, proof of this once again is very easy and the proof that uh, 2 implies 3 also follows very immediately. Okay. What you can do is let gamma 1 and gamma 2 uh, be two paths or two contours okay, uh, with initial point A and final point B. Okay. So, we will take any two contours okay, uh, with initial point A and final point B okay, and uh, let gamma 1, gamma 2 lie in G. So, we will allow them, we will we'll make sure that they lie in G and uh, their initial point is A and the final point is B. Then uh, what we want to show is that uh, the line integral of f on gamma 1 is equal to the line integral on gamma 2 by assuming that 2 is true. We are trying to prove that 2 implies 3. right? So, we will assume 2 is true. Okay. So, then gamma 1 minus gamma 2 is going to be a closed contour, is a closed contour. Recall what minus gamma 2 means, okay. you trace gamma 2 in the opposite direction. Okay. So, um, gamma 2 uh, is a closed contour uh, with initial and final points. Okay, initial and final point will be A itself. Okay. So, that uh, 2 tells us by 2 we are assuming 2. So, by 2 the integral the line integral f of z dz on the contour gamma 1 minus gamma 2 is 0. Okay. So, by properties of line integral uh, the left hand side is uh, f of z dz on gamma 1 minus the line integral on gamma 2 of f of z dz uh, is equal to 0. Okay. So, 3 is true, okay. 3 is true. So, that tells that the contour integral does not depend on uh, the path from A to B. Okay. So, uh, so, that is your uh, proof of uh, 2 implies 3 that is very easy. Okay. So, uh, the, the the more difficult part of this theorem is to prove that uh, we will we will prove proof of 3 implies 1. So, we will try to show that um, statement 3 uh, that the contour integral is uh, path independent will imply that there is an antiderivative uh, for the function for the continuous function little f. Okay. So, uh, in order to uh, prove this uh, well, we will construct a function okay, and then uh, we will show that that is analytic. Okay. So, suppose, uh, suppose uh, f of z dz or the line integral of that on gamma depends only on the initial point and initial and final points of gamma that is we are assuming 3 okay, uh, for any gamma that lies in G lies in the region G. Okay. So, now fix a point z naught belongs to Okay, you fix a point and uh, define capital F of z to be um, to be the integration over gamma of f of z dz, where gamma is any okay, uh, contour. Okay. 
uh, in G, which lies completely in G okay, uh, from Z naught to Z. Okay. Where okay, so this z should belong to uh, G, of course. So fix z naught belongs to G. Let z belong to G. So, z is a point in G. Okay, so define capital F of z to be that. Okay, firstly, uh, some notes here. Uh, F is well defined because of our assumption. It does not matter which contour you pre you pick. Uh, gamma is any contour in G, but uh, uh, capital F is well defined okay, because we are assuming uh, 3 here. Okay. So, F is well defined uh, since 3 is assumed, statement 3 is assumed that is uh, this is path independent, the contour integral is path independent. Okay. That is the first note okay. and then uh, the next is we will uh, introduce a notation. Uh, we will say uh, this will or we will write integral over gamma of f of z dz as uh, okay, as we will write this as uh, integration from z naught to z f of z dz. Okay. What that means is uh, we do not care about uh, which path we take from z naught to z as long as that path lies in G. Okay. So, uh, you uh, you take the contour integral from z naught to z okay. and uh, that this notation on the right hand side uh, means that uh, you take this. Okay. So, um, with this we will rewrite the definition of f of z, f of z is the contour integral from z naught to z of f of z dz. Okay. So, the only catch here is that you should make sure that the path from z naught to z or the uh, contour from z naught to z lies within g. Okay. All right. So, with that agreement uh, we will introduce this notation. Okay. So, we want to show that f is analytic this function. So, uh, we have constructed a function. Now, we want to show that is analytic. First, let us estimate or let us see uh, what the modulus of f of z plus h minus f of z by h minus f of z is. Okay. We are doing this estimate because we suspect that uh, f prime capital F prime of z is going to be little f of z. Okay. So, we first take a z belongs to G okay, and consider uh, modulus of f of z plus h minus f of z by h minus uh, little f of z. Okay. So, this is going to be uh, by definition of capital F, this is the integration, this is the line integral from z naught to z plus h of f of I need a different variable here zeta d zeta okay, minus the line integral from uh, z naught to z of uh, f of zeta d zeta. Okay. That is your definition of capital F of z plus h and capital F of z okay, divided by h minus f of z. Okay. So, once again we will assume that the contours from z naught to z plus h and z naught to z uh, lie in G. So, here is a, a schematic picture. Okay. So, uh, here is your region G, this is a region G okay. and z naught is a fixed point. Okay, and your z is here and we want z plus h eventually we are going to let z plus h be very close to z. Okay. So, then uh, you take any contour from z naught to z and some other contour from z naught to z plus h okay. and then um, and then you are looking at uh, the difference of these line integrals in the uh, estimate. Okay. So, uh, it is clear from uh, 
this expression here that this is the same as going back on this path okay, and then coming back along this path will give you the path from uh, z to z plus h or a path from z to z plus h. Okay. So, the above estimate okay, the above estimate is equal to the integration from uh, z to z plus h of f of zeta d zeta by h minus f of z. Okay. We are able to do this because uh, the line integrals are path independent in G. Okay. The line integrals of little f are path independent. Otherwise, we will not be able to go from that step to uh, this step which I have just written. Okay. So, using this uh, what we can say is that well, uh, since, since G is open and uh, z is a point in G, what we can do is you can find a small ball uh, around z completely contained in G. Okay. So, we will uh, say that a delta ball lies uh, in G. Okay. So, there is, uh, there is a delta positive, okay. let me call that delta not positive such that B z delta naught, a ball of radius delta naught, an open ball of radius delta naught centered at z is contained in G. Okay. Uh, so, when uh, when the modulus of h is less than delta naught by 2, okay, the straight line joining uh, z and z plus h okay, uh, is contained in G. Okay. So, here in, in this estimate, okay, we do not care what path we take from z to z plus h, okay, here is z and here is z plus h. So, let us let me go back to the above picture. We do not care what path we take from z to z plus h, we are interested in the contour integral of f okay, along any path from z to z plus h. So, what we are since G is open, okay, when uh, when you consider H to be small enough like this, okay, uh, the straight line from Z to Z plus H, okay, is of course contained uh, completely within G, so that we can uh, pick, okay, uh, so pick the straight line path or straight line uh, contour from z to z plus h okay, uh, for the above integral when modulus of h is less than delta naught by 2. Okay. So, uh, then this estimate we were making f of z plus h minus f of z by h minus little f of z. Okay, this estimate is going to be your um, uh, modulus from z to z plus h. Now, I need a notation for straight line path. Let me say uh, z comma z plus h in this kind of interval notation will indicate a straight line path. Okay. So, um, f of zeta minus f of z. Now, what I can do is uh, say this is f of z times h when I pull it to the numerator. Okay. So, now because I am uh, considering a straight line path, I can include this f of z into the integration. Okay. Uh, so, this is d zeta uh, divided by h. Okay. 
and uh, now this is um, less than or equal to by the estimation theorem we had earlier this is less than or equal to uh, 1 by the modulus of h times uh, the integration on the straight line from z to z plus h of the modulus of f of zeta minus f of z times the modulus d zeta. Okay. So, now uh, little f is assumed to be continuous that is the hypothesis of this theorem. Okay. So, by continuity the integrand uh, will be shrunk okay. that is the idea. Okay. So, uh, by continuity of f okay, uh, given any epsilon positive okay, there is uh, a delta positive such that uh, whenever uh, modulus of zeta minus z is strictly less than delta and zeta belongs to g, okay, uh, modulus of f of zeta minus f of z is strictly less than epsilon. Okay. By continuity we can find such a uh, delta. Okay. So, given so, if we are given any uh, epsilon positive, okay, choose delta 1 to be the minimum of uh, this delta and the delta naught such that the delta naught ball around z uh, was in G. Recall delta naught is from here. Okay. So, delta naught is from here. So, uh, pick uh, delta 1 to be the minimum of these two. So, that two things are satisfied. Okay. So, that whenever uh, modulus of zeta minus z is strictly less than uh, delta 1, two things are true. Modulus of f of zeta minus f of z is strictly less than epsilon okay. and uh, the modulus of f of z plus h minus capital F of z by h minus f of z which we were estimating above is less than or equal to 1 by modulus of h. Now, the integrand uh, is strictly less than epsilon. Okay. So, I uh, will first write this z comma z plus h integrand modulus of f of zeta minus f of z uh, times mod uh, d zeta. Okay, and the integrand is strictly less than epsilon. So, I have 1 by mod h modulus of h and then the integration of on the straight line of modulus of d zeta will give me the length of the straight line which is mod h. Okay. So, this is equal to epsilon. Okay. Since epsilon is arbitrary, uh, so f is uh, differentiable at every point. every point uh, z belongs to g. Z was arbitrary remember okay? and f prime of z we have also proved is equal to little f of z. Okay? So, f is analytic okay? and then uh, the, the differentiation of capital F is uh, little f. Okay? So, that shows that f has an antiderivative okay? and that proves 1. So, 1 is true by 3. So, 1 implies uh, 2 and 1 implies 3 by your fundamental uh, theorem of calculus okay. and we showed that 2 implies 3 and we also showed that 3 implies 1. Okay. So, now uh, we can go from 1 to 2 or 2 to 3 or 3 to 1 uh, or any way we want. Okay. So, all these 3 statements are equivalent. Okay. So, that proves uh, this theorem. So, uh, this tool is useful uh, as we will see uh, further. Okay. So, this uh, antiderivative theorem will, uh, will be used constantly okay. and uh, now uh, we are we will see another version of uh, Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, we showed that uh, Cauchy's theorem is true when you consider a rectangular region. Now, we are going to show that 
if you can somehow fit in a rectangle uh, uh, with diagonally uh, opposite ends uh, being uh, you know a fixed point z naught and some variable point z then uh, your cauchy's theorem will go through the same proof or uh, a similar proof will go through okay uh, you you essentially use the fact that cauchy's theorem works on a rectangle and then uh, apply it here okay so uh, here is uh, cauchy's theorem another version so cauchy's theorem uh, for a disk let us say okay so this should be considered as a slight generalization of uh, the earlier version of cauchy's theorem namely the cauchy's theorem for a rectangle okay so if uh, f of z is analytic okay uh, in an open disk uh, b z not delta okay so this is uh, an open disk centered at z naught and of radius delta okay then the contour integral of f of z dz on gamma is zero for any closed curve okay for any closed contour gamma in b z naught delta Okay, so that is the Cauchy's theorem for a disk. Okay, and uh, the proof of this goes as follows. Okay, and um, so here is a disk centered at z naught and of radius delta. Okay, so you consider any point z. In the in the disk, okay. So it could be right above z naught and uh, horizontally uh, on the line uh, on a horizontal line from z naught. Doesn't matter, but you can put a rectangle like that. Okay. So in the two cases that I mentioned, you will get a degenerate rectangle, but uh, in all other cases you will get a genuine uh, rectangle like that it does not matter. Okay. And then um, you consider two contours one is this call that sigma 1. So, you start from z naught travel horizontally and then go up. Okay. So, it is the trace of a contour you can parameterize that uh, trace okay, to get sigma 1 and then uh, you parameterize these two okay, and then you get uh, sigma 2. Okay. So, uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is a uh, is the boundary of a rectangular region of course. Okay. So, by uh, Cauchy's theorem. Of course, we are assuming that f is analytic, right? F is analytic on this uh, on this rectangle uh, rectangular region. Okay, so by Cauchy's theorem, uh, earlier version. Okay, so uh, on for a rectangle, the integration on sigma one f of z dz is equal to the integration on sigma 2 f of z t z. So, um, so we will store this fact, we will need this fact. Okay. So, now what we do is we will define capital F of z okay, uh, is equal to uh, the integration on sigma 1 of f of zeta d zeta okay, for z belongs to b z naught delta. Okay. So, if z is any point in the disk we define capital F of z uh, to be the 
integration along the sigma 1. Okay. Sigma 1 is a fixed path okay. uh, and also incidentally uh, this is uh, note that this is the same as the integration on sigma 2 of f of zeta d zeta by the above note by 1 from 1 let us say okay, from 1. So, um, so now um, what we can observe is that um, f of z will decode f of z on sigma 1. Okay. So, on sigma 1 which is first horizontal and then vertical. Okay. Uh, if you consider your z naught as x naught comma y naught, okay, then your y value stays constant on the horizontal line. Okay. So, uh, the integration along sigma 1 goes in two portions. Okay. Firstly, where uh, you have gamma 1 f of z dz plus integration on gamma 2 f of z dz where gamma 1 is this portion and then gamma 2 is the other portion. So, uh, sigma 1 is actually this gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Okay. So, um, strictly speaking I am talking about the traces of these uh, paths. Okay. So, uh, but we can parameterize them in such a way okay. and the way we parameterize does not matter for the contour integration that we saw earlier. Okay. So, uh, now we have uh, split this integral into two portions. On the first portion we note that uh, y is constant and on the second portion uh, y varies. Okay. So, with that observation I can say that if I partially differentiate capital F with respect to y, uh, y is varying only on the second portion. Okay. So, uh, let me first backtrack let me write f of z equals uh, integration okay, uh, on integration from t equals x 0 to let us say uh, x. So, I am calling this point z equals x comma y okay, in this picture. Okay. So, then this is f of t plus i y naught and then d z will be on the horizontal path d z is d x plus i d y, but since y is not varying you only have d x okay. and I am uh, using the parameter t for x. So, I get a d t re really here okay. and then plus uh, for the second portion uh, I have y is varying from uh, y naught to y and f starts at x plus i y naught and goes until x plus i y. So, for the y part I will use a variable t okay, and then I have uh, d x plus i, I uh, d y is now i d t, d x is 0. So, I get i d t. Okay. So, uh, since y is not varying on the first portion, okay, uh, when I calculate the partial derivative of capital F with respect to y, only the second portion of this integral survives okay. and then I get this is f of uh, your y goes in okay, by the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. So, you get f of z uh, times i okay, that i there is a multiplier i. So, you get i okay, so which is i f of z. Okay. Likewise, uh, since f is capital F is also equal to uh, the integration on sigma 2 of f of z f of zeta d zeta. Okay. So, the f of z is integration on sigma 2 here is z equals x y and here is z naught equals x naught comma y naught. Okay. So, uh, by similar argument okay, you can uh, say that uh, this is equal to this is gamma 3. Let us split this into two portions gamma 3 and gamma 4. So, uh, the integration on sigma 2 is equal to the sum of the integrations on gamma 3 and gamma 4. Okay. So, on gamma 3 you get uh, y is varying. So, y goes from t equals y naught to t equals y. 
of f of x naught plus i t okay times i d t okay plus uh, on gamma 4 you can uh, use a parameter t and x goes from x naught to x of f of uh, x t plus i y okay uh, y value has already reached uh, y from y naught okay and then you have uh, dx plus i dy becomes dt now okay so uh, from this it is clear that the partial derivative of f with respect to x okay this representation of capital f is convenient to calculate uh, partial of f with respect to x okay and the partial of f with respect to x uh, from the second portion uh, is clearly uh, f of x plus i y namely f of z okay because the first portion in the first portion uh, you know your integral is a constant with respect to x okay so uh, so then uh, you see that do f by do y is i times uh, f of z which is do f by do x okay so f satisfies uh, the c r the cauchy riemann equations okay and uh, the differentiation of f okay it can be um, okay it can be found out either using um, do f by do x or do f by do y okay so um, sticking to do f by do x we see that the differentiation of f is nothing but uh, little f okay so uh, and uh, and the partial derivatives okay partials of f uh, are continuous Okay. So, uh, so by the theorem we had earlier, so f is analytic okay. and uh, we conclude that uh, okay. what do we conclude? Uh, we conclude that f has uh, little f has okay. f is analytic and of course, f prime of z equals little f of z. Okay. One way to calculate f prime remember is just calculating do f by do x right. Uh, we had uh, four different formulae for computing uh, do f by uh, I mean um, f prime of z. Okay. So, by one form we have do f by do x is f prime of z equals little f of z. Okay. So, f has an antiderivative. in b uh, z naught delta okay and by the antiderivative theorem therefore okay which we just proved uh, the integration of f of z dz on any closed contour is equal to 0 okay for any closed contour gamma which lies in um, b z naught delta okay, and that proves the Cauchy's theorem uh, for a disk. So, next uh, in order to uh, come up with integral formulae okay, Cauchy's integral formula okay, uh, uh, which, which actually helps us to uh, compute the values of an analytic function. Okay, by uh, taking its values uh, on uh, on a circle surrounding that point okay, uh, or the value of an analytic function at a point uh, by using the values uh, on a circle surrounding that point. Okay. Uh, what we will do is uh, we will want to uh, define first uh, a quantity called an index which measures uh, how many times roughly speaking how many times a curve goes around a point okay a closed curve goes around point okay so the intuition is that we are trying to measure uh, given a point and a closed curve we are trying to measure how many times this uh, closed contour goes around uh, that given point 
Okay. So, uh, here we will start discussing uh, index of a point with respect to a closed curve. Okay. So, um, in order to define or make the uh, correlation between uh, how many times the curve uh, surrounds the point okay, and uh, the following line integral which I am going to state, okay, we need the following lemma. Okay. So, um, if a piecewise uh, differentiable closed curve gamma okay, does not pass through a point A. Okay, then the value of the integral d z by z minus a okay, over gamma is an integral multiple of 2 pi i. Okay. So, in short I could have said uh, if a piece if a uh, closed contour gamma okay, does not pass through a point a. Okay. So, um, let me word it this way. Okay. Let me store this. Okay. And uh, we want to see that this special integral okay, uh, actually is an integral multiple this integral okay, uh, is a integral as an integer multiple of uh, 2 pi i. Okay. So, um, okay, so, this is to say the this is an integer okay, the integer multiple of 2 pi i okay. and uh, that integer actually uh, roughly speaking is the measure of the number of times the curve goes around a point okay. and um, integers have signs of course. Okay. So, uh, indirectly we are associating a sign. So, a curve could go around minus 2 times for example, around a point. Okay. So, we are keeping track of the orientation of the curve as well. Okay. That is what this integer tells us. Okay. So, let us uh, start by uh, proving this lemma. Okay. Proof of it is as follows. Uh, now, let alpha comma beta be the parameter interval okay, for the path or the contour gamma. Okay. It is a closed contour okay, and um, gamma of alpha is equal to gamma of beta because it is a closed contour. So, now what we will do is we will um, try to define h of t. So, define h of t to be uh, the integration from alpha to t okay, of uh, gamma prime of t d t by gamma of t uh, minus a. Firstly, h is defined before I say h prime, h is defined and continuous. Okay, continuous uh, on the closed interval alpha comma beta okay that is clear from the definition okay also uh, h of alpha is zero you are integrating from alpha to alpha okay h of alpha is zero so uh, then h prime of t okay is uh, simply gamma prime of t by gamma of t minus a okay, by the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. So, um, so, this is true of course, uh, whenever uh, gamma prime of t is continuous. Okay. We, have a, we have a 
piecewise uh, differentiable, piecewise smooth uh, curve. Okay, so uh, we have to be careful. This is true only when gamma prime of t is continuous. Okay, so now uh, notice that if we want to find the derivative of e raised to minus h of t gamma of t minus a, okay, uh, then we get 0. Okay, so, how is that? So, let us use uh, differentiation uh, okay, uh, or the product rule for differentiation, you get e power minus h of t times uh, minus h prime of t. Okay, the differentiation of e power minus h of t times gamma of t minus a uh, plus e raised to minus h of t times the differentiation of gamma of t minus a is gamma prime of t. Okay. So, this gives you uh, e raised to minus h of t okay, times minus h prime, we just saw what h prime is okay, uh, and h prime is gamma prime of t by gamma of t minus a okay, times gamma of t minus a plus e power minus h of t gamma prime of t. Okay. So, these cancel uh, notice that a is never equal to gamma of t. So, these cancel uh, and then uh, you get this is equal to 0. Okay. So, e raised to uh, minus h of t times gamma of t minus a is going to give you uh, a constant because its derivative is 0, okay. some constant c is a uh, constant. Since it is de the derivative of this function is 0, okay. so you get a constant and so uh, e power or gamma of t minus a is actually a function c e raised to h of t. Okay. And so, well, uh, c e raised to h of beta is gamma of beta minus a, okay, which is gamma of alpha minus a, because gamma of beta is equal to gamma of alpha, we are dealing with a uh, simple closed or rather sorry uh, closed contour. Okay. And then that gives you uh, c times e raised to h of alpha okay, by definition or uh, by this equation here uh, this is your c e raised to h of alpha okay. and h of alpha we know is 0. Uh, so, this is c e raised to 0 or this is c equal to c. Okay. That tells us that e raised to h of beta is equal to 1 and we know precisely when e raised to something is 1. Okay. So, uh, this implies that h of beta is uh, 2 pi i n for some integer n okay, and which is what we want. Okay. So, um, so, this integration 1 by z minus a okay, uh, when we parameterize it okay, we get this h of h of t, h of t is nothing but the parameterization of this integral. Okay, and um, or h of beta is the parameterization of this integral. Sorry, okay, and then uh, that is uh, an integral multiple, an integer multiple of two pi i. Okay, uh, so that shows the lemma. Okay, so now we define uh, this integral. Okay, the value of this integral. Okay, uh, divided by 1 by 2 pi i okay, to be the index of the point A with respect to the curve, the closed curve gamma. So, that integer we are going to call that as gamma okay, and the intuition you will have is that uh, you are keeping track of how many times gamma goes around a okay, with, uh, with direction in mind. Okay. So, if, if you have that the index is minus 2, then uh, your, your curve is going around point a 
uh, in the clockwise direction, okay, etc.